Hi, in this video we're going to look at the harmony and the tonality of our first set work and the glory of the Lord. If you're unsure about the meaning of harmony or tonality or any other word, then just click on the word as it comes up and I'll give you a better explanation. And the glory of the Lord is in the key of A major and that means that all of the notes in this piece are taken from the A major scale. But staying in one key for the whole piece would just be boring. So at bar 22, the music changes key or modulates to the key of E major. The key of E major is the dominant. The dominant is the fifth note of the scale. And if you're familiar with your alphabet, then in A major, the fifth note, A, B, C, D, E, is E. So the dominant of A major is E major. Once Handel's had all the fun he's going to have in the key of E major, he modulates back to A major at bar 43. Then at bar 66, the piece modulates again to E major and moves swiftly on to B major, which is the dominant in E major. So we've gone from A major, we've gone to the dominant A, B, C, D, E major, and then from E, E, F, G, A, B, we've gone to the dominant of E major, which is B. Do you get that? So we've gone from A to the dominant of A, which is E, and then we've gone to the dominant of E, which is B. So we're in the dominant of the dominant. Does that make sense? After a while, the music then comes back, modulating back to E major, and then goes back to A major again for the end. Now I may have made that sound more complicated than I needed to, but all you need to know is that the piece is in A major, it modulates to E major, and then it modulates again to B major. Now as we look at the harmony in this piece, I'm going to be introducing you to a few concepts that are quite difficult to explain. So as the word comes up on the left, make sure you click on it, and I'll give you a better explanation and show you how it all works. The first of the harmonic devices that we're going to look at is suspensions. A suspension is where a note from one chord is held and carries over to the next chord. Now the note that we held on to the second chord doesn't normally belong to the normal notes of that chord. What happens next is that that note, that suspended note, moves down a step to join the normal notes of the chord. And when that happens, we say that the suspension has resolved. Handel uses suspensions in this piece to add color and movement to his chord progressions. And you'll find many examples in this piece. Another harmonic device used in this piece is a cadence. A cadence is a progression of two chords that comes at the end of a musical phrase. It's kind of like punctuation that comes at the end of a sentence in a piece of writing and tells you where you are in that paragraph. There are four main types of cadence and Handel uses three of them in this piece. The first is the perfect cadence. This is the most common cadence and it sounds like a full stop. It's chord five to chord one and whenever you finish a musical phrase on chord one, it's going to sound finished because chord one is the home, it's the tonic. The next cadence is called an imperfect cadence and it's kind of like the opposite of a perfect cadence. It's often chord one to chord five. It doesn't have to be though, so it could be any chord followed by chord five, but when you end a musical phrase on that chord five, it sounds unfinished, it's almost like a comma, so it leaves the listener wanting more. Another cadence that sounds like a full stop is the plagal cadence. This is chord four to chord one, and it's often called the Amen cadence. This is because at, in many sacred pieces of music and church hymns, you'll find this cadence right at the end, and it sounds like an Amen. The last cadence, which actually isn't used in this piece, is called the interrupted cadence. This is chord five to chord six. Now chord six is usually a minor chord, 
And I believe Handel hasn't used the imperfect cadence simply because the minor chord doesn't really fit in with the mood of this piece. The mood is triumphant and glorious and upbeat and we don't want a minor chord kind of getting in the way of that. So Handel hasn't used an interrupted cadence. He does use perfect cadence, he uses the imperfect cadence and he uses the plagal cadence right at the end. In an earlier video we saw that this piece is made up of four main melodies and the fourth of these melodies is a repeated note. It's one note and repeated again and again and this creates a harmonic effect that we call a pedal. Normally a pedal would be sung on the first note of the scale, that's the tonic, um, and it would usually be sung right at the bottom of the texture in the bass. Whenever this happens at the top of the texture, we call it an inverted pedal because it's been kind of flipped upside down and it's at the top of the texture instead of the bass. If the pedal is not on the tonic, if it's on the fifth note of the scale, for example, which is called the dominant, then we call it a dominant pedal and so on. If it was on the subdominant, it would be a subdominant pedal. If it was on the median, it would be the median pedal. But in, in this piece, we have a pedal note on the tonic and we also have a dominant pedal. We also have an inverted pedal or an inverted dominant pedal, which is where it's on the fifth note and it's at the very top of the texture. Let's listen now to find out where these features are in the set work. The tonality of A major is clear right from the beginning. The introduction then ends with a suspension and a perfect cadence. The piece modulates here to the dominant, which is E major. This section ends with a perfect cadence in E major. We then immediately move back to A major. This key is confirmed by a perfect cadence in A major at bar 46 and 47. The repeated notes of idea 4 on A create a tonic pedal. The sopranos repeat idea 4 at the top of the texture and on the dominant E, so this is an inverted dominant pedal. At this point the music modulates again to the dominant E major and then on again to the dominant of the dominant B major, which is confirmed by a perfect cadence in B major at 73. The phrase ends on chord 5 here, creating an imperfect cadence and a kind of musical comma. The music modulates back to the dominant key with a perfect cadence in E major at bar 93. Then we come back to A major and stay in that key to the end. The basses sing idea 4 here on an E, creating a dominant pedal. This section ends with another imperfect cadence, continuing to build the momentum onto the end. The whole piece ends on a dramatic plagal cadence, also known as an Amen cadence. Okay, there was a lot of information in this video and you probably didn't get it all first time round. Not to worry, go back and watch the video again and again and make sure you're taking notes as you go along so that you don't miss anything. Okay, that's it. Thanks for liking and commenting on this video and make sure you click on that subscribe button. Bye.